So I'm going to talk about my 2025 tech stack. Yes, it's going to be one of those videos. A lot of people like them. For some reason, they've become really popular most because I think people like hearing, okay, what are you using to build the things that you build? What are the things that you look for? What are the things that you've maybe added from years past? And while I don't necessarily have a particular video talking about this in years past, I do have a couple of videos just talking about the tools I'm using or things that I use to build Laravel applications. And I figured this would be a great video just talking about here's the things I reach for when it comes to 90% or more of my applications. So what am I actually using when it comes to building things for the projects, for the demos, for the applications that I want to build? Let's start off with Laravel. And this shouldn't come as a surprise to too many people because this is the tool that got me to fall in love with web development all over again. And in fact, it's really what got me into web development. If you think about it, because I was building some just very basic level things. I didn't really build a, an application. I would say I built websites and maybe a fun little JavaScript stuff here or there, but I didn't really build an application, a web app until I started building within Laravel. So that's definitely the first thing I think of when it comes to tech stack. But where do I go from there? What are the things that I use next? Really, I use Livewire and specifically Livewire Volt, because I think Livewire Volt gives me the ability to write single components, a single file component, and I just have everything set up. I'll we'll have Livewire Volt, and then I have Tailwind. And specifically within Tailwind for styling, I use Flux. And really, this in and of itself, like this thing is everything that I need to build applications. I have my full stack batteries include framework. I have something to do on the front end and then I have styles to do it with. And that's all it comes down to for the most part. Of course, I have bits and pieces of stuff that I add in here and there. I add like little tools, I add little packages, usually for when I need them most. There's one package that I really appreciate right now, and that's the Essentials package by Nuno Maduro. And this really just gives me the stuff I need out of the box when it comes to, do I have formatting right? Do I have all within Laravel? And I, again, I like stuff that is not a ton of opinions while also being things I don't have to think about, if that makes sense. I like things that don't make me have to change how I'm writing an application, but I do have the opinions to say this is how I should write most of my applications without having to think about it. And the Essentials Package by Nuno Maduro does just that. It allows me to say, okay, I have all my testing that I need. I have my Rector PHP, which gives me styling and in terms of the PHP code styling out of the box, as well as anything like linting for that. And so I use Prettier, usually with the Prettier Blade package to say, this is how I'm formatting my Blade file, specifically my Volt files. And if you look at my Z video, the code editor that I'm currently using, you'll see how I'm doing that within Z, formatting my files on save using Prettier and specifically the Prettier Blade function. All of this really comes down to the Fission Starter Kit that I created, which allows me to get all of this running up and out of the box. And usually anything new that I'm like, hey, for the most part, any small packages that just help within DX or UX of building out an application, I usually add it to my Fission Starter Kit because that's what I'm starting most applications with. Even with the new Livewire Laravel Starter Kits, I usually just start with Fission because it... It is my personalized, my opinionated starter kit that I'm grabbing all the things that I need to start out a new application. And yes, there's a bunch of different packages that work for the things that I need it when I need to grab something like the actions package to, to add actions to my Laravel live wire kit. Or maybe there's a specific live wire utility function or utility package that I might need. But for the most part, everything that comes out of the box with live wire, with flux, anything that's in my fission starter kit is my tech stack in general. Now, of course, I might make another video that goes into, okay, how am I hosting these packages or how am I doing stuff that is like the outer skirts of package or website or application development. And I might go into that. I also have a video that I want to work on that's okay. How am I using AI specifically to build my applications? 
that's part of my tech stack right now. Like right now I'm using Claude and Claude code in order to create applications and using Zed in order to modify things that Claude code is kind of building in the background. But really I found that my AI workflow works great, even with the tools that I'm currently using, even with Livewire, even with Laravel, even with Flux, because of things like MCP servers, where I can say, okay, this is exactly how I want my AI tools to talk to the tools that I'm using. So how can I use the tools that I love while still getting the best of both worlds with AI generation and AI retrievability, AI functionality that I want. And MCP is really the answer to that. Of course, I think as we go into the future, there's going to be additional options. Right now, I usually just use MCPs for Laravel documentation, for Livewire documentation, and then for Livewire Flux. But there's going to be other things down the road I think that MCPs work great for. So what is my tech stack? And it's Livewire, and it's Laravel, it's Flux. And outside of that, there's not too much that I usually need for most applications. Now, if I need a mobile application, right now I'm reaching for Expo. I'm getting a first look into native PHP to see what that looks like and being able to build and play around with that as well. So I'm really excited for that, especially for the times when I don't need too much other than just something in the hands of my users while still being able to use the things that I love about Laravel. Right now I'm using Expo with the Laravel API and it's working great. And I'll have more videos on how I'm doing that for my particular project in the near future. But Expo has been fantastic for the things that I need. So most people ask me, okay, why not React? Why not Vue? Even within Laravel, those are great options. I like both of them. I even like Svelte. I like all those options, especially within a Laravel context within Inertia. But the reason why I have chose Livewire and the reason why I'm continuing to choose Livewire for mostly every single project that I'm building, even if it's just a simple web application where I may need some Alpine here or there, because Livewire just gives you Alpine out of the box, you don't have to think about it. And I probably am going to need to talk to the server at some point in time within those applications because of the speed that I can build things. So when I'm getting from start, finish, the fastest, Livewire allows me to do just that. I have to think about a lot when I'm doing something within React or Vue. And not to say that that structure, especially within Inertia, I think it's fantastic. And not to say it's slow for everybody, but for me, like I said, I like to move fast. And the speed at which I can do that is so much faster within Livewire. Why? Because if I want to access the database and grab something while staying in that same component or building it, I can just do it. If I want to say, hey, does this actually exist within the server? I can just do it. And I don't have to think about okay, I'm building out a new controller. I am now submitting a use form hook with inertia to hit that controller and then receive that information. And I'm bouncing back and forth between two different places. I can just do it in one place. The syntax and the actual structure of the code doesn't bother me as much, even though I feel like I know React better than I do Blade. There's so much within Blade that I just don't know. And even like the edge cases of what Blade looks like, I just don't know. <laughs> but I think Livewire itself itself gives you the ability to go from start to finish quickly and the way I build is just building things fast. I don't want to spend too much time on a single project. One, because my brain starts to wander. And then two, because I just want to get it out and running. And I want to make sure that project that I have it actually makes sense. And if I can get it in front of people quicker using Livewire, then that's what I'm going to do. So that's my 2025 stack. It's simple. It's nothing too crazy. It's nothing different than I've talked about on this video. But at the very least, it's just me taking what I know and continuing to build with it. I learned Laravel. You can see the initial video that kind of kickstarted this channel a couple of years ago because I wanted something that gave me opinions while also gave me the flexibility to do what I wanted to do. And your tech stack should be just that. It should be something simple that gives you the ability to do what you want to do without having to reach for too much while also knowing that 
if you do need to break the bounds of what's capable within your particular tech stack, you know exactly how you would do it. A lot of people think, oh, Livewire is incapable because it's not this, it's not ecosystem friendly of having all these particular packages or the ability to render it effortlessly on the front end. No, it is not great for a single page application, but you can do it. And because I know how I would build something like this client side heavy application in Livewire, just as much as anyone who's very capable in React knows how to do it in React, I think it makes it per for a perfect tech stack. Me being able to choose the tools that I know really well in order to build the thing that I want to build as quickly as possible. So whatever tools you currently know or just ones that you're trying to figure out, make sure you know them enough to break the bounds of what they actually can do or what people say they can do, but then just start building things, just start creating things, just start making things, just start shipping, just start building the thing that you want to build because overall that's what it's all about. So keep creating.